Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Martin Element. He's a Vancouver-based marketing and corporate advisor who focuses on sourcing and pursuing new business ventures and opportunities. Today, he's talking to us from England. Martin, welcome back to the show. Welcome uh, uh, to everybody around the world, and I'm in um, a piece of heaven here, a little place called Godling, and um, my friend's family have a beautiful home, one of the most beautiful gardens I've ever seen in my life, <coughs> excuse me, but we're also experiencing the hottest day of the year today, and I happen to be in the city of London most of the day, so that was a little uncomfortable, and coming home in the train when it gets extremely hot, of course, the railway lines buckle with the heat, which is what happened. So a lot of trains were cancelled. So not only was the train full, not only was it going at a very slow pace, I also was put in like the heat in uh, like sardines. It was just a terrible time. But that's enough of that. It's been a very, very interesting time. I've been here for just over a week. And you know, I'm seeing all the results in the business world of Britex. Um, but, you know, a lot of people are saying the same thing, that they thought there was a, an overreaction. And Mr. Carney has come in for a lot of critical comment, that he was sensationalizing and doom and glooming. And he still, just this morning, had a big article saying that, you know, it's going to be a very rough ride, it's going to be a year, but, of course, the F and T is now higher than it was before the announcement of Bridex, uh, the financial uh, uh, stock markets here. Um, they've already done a trade deal with Australia, which I mean, um, I don't know how fast those things will be put together. You'd have to wonder that was in the making before, but maybe not. But that's been announced. And I was just explaining to Jim before we came on air. There's a company that makes parts in the um, iPhone and phones and transformers. Uh, uh, chips, chips, I beg your pardon. And, um, it's just been bought by a Japanese consortium for 24 billion, um, uh, pounds. And the day after it came back on the market, it was trading 40% higher, just to reflect the bid. And the, also, they've been announced that they're going to double or triple the amount of employees. Of course, they're all over the world, but there'll be a lot of them here in Britain. And you have to ask yourself if there was any fear of a problem of one thing and another, the EU, uh, that they would have thought twice about doing that deal. But no, they've done the deal. It's just a huge endorsement again, of course, of um, of Great Britain and uh, its economy. So it's a very interesting time, very, very interesting time here in London. And, you know, uh, the other thing is it's strange that, of course, all the percentages in central London were... I think 70% of people voted or said to, to stay in, particularly the, in the centre of London itself. And I've met a lot of people from the centre of London. And almost to, to a man and a woman, they all voted to, 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 to go out. So I don't know where all these other people are, but they're not people I'm talking to and doing potential uh, uh, conversations with and, and uh, <coughs> doing things with. So it's excuse me, interesting to see the um, the different comments of people and, and reflecting. And I was up in Wales 
briefly this weekend, and they also uh, voted to come out as, uh, as well on, you know, on a huge percentage uh, of them, and they were very uh, wanting to come out of the EU. So, a lot of lot of interesting things. A lot of lot of business uh, is is moving along. Um, I've been today in the city talking to a lot of people involved in the resource sector, and they were laughing and, and joking and saying, you know, isn't it amazing, Martin, 19th of July, and here I am in my office at 4 o'clock on a hot sunny summer, summer's afternoon. It's a reflection of, of, of gold and, and silver and what's going on. Uh, lithium seems to have a very good audience here. Um, they seem to be uh, uh, very keen on that. I think a lot of different people that I spoke with. Um, I'm working with a gentleman by the name of Mark Bamba, who has a uh, he puts a public relations together, and um, he he has done a great job over here. Does a great job, Buffalo, and he um, he's, he's been very gracious in meeting a lot of different people. But there was one chap that I wanted to comment about a little bit from an interest point of view for the listeners. His name is Per, P-E-R, Wimmer, a Danish fellow. And he runs a, a company that's very involved in the financing of companies over here. Um, and he has a, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's written three books. Um, and his last one's on the green and the sustainability of green and products to do with green. His name's Per Wimmer. But his, his passion... Um, is the, uh, this is the birds in the beautiful garden here in the background. His passion is, um, space travel is one of his passions. And doing some more of the exciting things. And one of the things that he's uh, done is that he, with a, another chap, an Englishman, a number of years, a couple of years ago, they went up to 9,000 feet and jumped over Everest and skydived over Everest, which was a new world record. I can only imagine what it's like skydiving at those sorts of uh, heights. So he's a very interesting man, and he's getting he's in the banking business and in the investment business, and he also is a founding um, director, founder of Galaxy, which is uh, a galactic or Galaxy, the um, uh, Richard Branson's spaceship company, and um, he, he, so it was a very interesting time talking to him. And he also has been on holiday and spends a lot of time with someone we've talked a lot about on the show, Elon Musk. And um, so it was just interesting to to meet someone that's been obviously uh, uh, close to the man that we spent a lot of time talking about with the Tesla. And he was saying how brave he is, the way he um, puts his money and, and puts everything out. And now, he said, it was one of the more interesting things he was saying uh, later this afternoon was that the space company that he has, even though it had tremendous uh, uh, money problems at the beginning, it's now got a, a, a really well uh, comforted with all kinds of money behind it, um, billions of dollars on the balance sheet. So, and that's because, of course, he's, he's undercutting the, a lot of the putting up of, of uh, um, satellites as much as 70% compared to the usual companies that do those sorts of things. So, He's obviously having an experience in a lot of success in other than, than his car's successes. So that, that was an interesting, that's the second time I've met him in the last week actually. And that was, that was a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm still uh, fascinated that I've been in the business since 81. I've been, I was stockbroker since then. I, when then I left the stockbroker business in 89, but I have only experienced once in my lifetime a, a, a metals or a precious metals market. I don't know what dates that was, listener, or listeners, but I do know we were busy right through July, and there was a little lull for about a week or ten days, or almost two weeks, I think, in, in August. But otherwise, um, it, it, a little slight lull, and then it was right back on again. So, and I think that's what we're experiencing. Because I don't see any of these um, situations slowing down, um, and I see that a lot of deals that I'm aware of. Um, like Gold Bullion today had, a, uh, I think, 5 million shares traded, and it was up 2 or 3 pennies, which doesn't sound a lot, but when you've got 350, 360 million shares out, it's a heck of a lot, because, of course, you've got the dollar move there. So there is action out there, and it's just interesting, and it's fun to see, because it's been five hard years of nothing in that particular role. So what else you got for me, Jim? 
Well, I was just wondering, do they feel a lower pound is going to be to their advantage? That's an interesting one. Um, yes, of course, is the immediate answer. Um, you know, uh, they're thinking that it will. Um, I think that they uh, feel that, you know, it makes their products more uh, saleable. So that's the, that's the yin and the yang, isn't it, with all of these sorts of situations. A lot of talk about Trump, of course. A lot of talk about Trump. A lot of people think that's going to, you know, even, I think all the, even the Brit uh, exit people are a little bit nervous about that particular scenario because there's no love lost between um, some of the major players in Britain and um, and uh, Mr. Trump. And now, of course, with um, Boris being awarded the Foreign Office as his, uh, and, uh, you know, member of parliament for the Foreign Office, that won't, that will be, if something was to happen there, that could be very difficult. Um, but as you know, in the past, we try and stay away from the politic a little bit, Jim. But So I, I think that the pound is going to help them. Um, it will help them. And it, it only remains to be seen. But I can tell you, there's still there's some real diehards there that, that are determined to think that this is, a, this is going to be a, a, a really long, hard road. And the other thing is, of course, that we've talked about it a lot in the past, is the ramifications of what's happening in Turkey, for instance, right now. And they're already talking about the unbelievable amount of um, movement of migration that'll potentially come out of all this. And once again, you're going to have the strains and stresses of who knows how many people. I mean, you know, a million, two million people exiting, trying to get out of Turkey. Um, so it, 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 it becomes a human, humanic, hum, humanistic problem, but of course a humanity problem. But it also um, comes a huge, fortunately, an economic financial problem, and it's it's uh, it's going to be putting strains and stresses. And excuse me, listeners, I am very tired, but I wanted to do the show. I wanted to do the show for a couple of days, but I had probably the worst flu, cold, influenza I've had in ten years. So I'm only just feeling up to really doing a show here uh, today. But I really wanted to do it from England because it's it's interesting for the listeners to hear what what is going on here from in in, in the um, in the trenches, but in the trenches, uh, more so in the uh, the junior deals we're talking, of course, here. Not in the trenches with the big corporations, but with the junior, particularly the mining and the resource side at the moment. And uh, that's what I've been focusing on. So it's just interesting, and I'm glad I, I was able to do and able to do a show, Jim. We'll have more with Martin Element right after the break. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc., listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Martin Element, who's in Britain right now. Martin, is there any feeling that the EU is going to try to punish the UK for trying to pull out? Oh, yes, there's been comments about that. Uh, there has been comments, but I think that if that was the case, um, I think with the current, just the recent developments that have happened in the last week, that I, I think a lot of a, a lot of these potentially uh, problems um, are going to be lessened because I think everybody has to know that it's going to be you know let's try and get along, let's try and make this thing work as well as we can, let's try and. Um, and uh, uh, make things work for everybody's sake. So I, I think there's been some rumblings about that. But, of course, the interesting thing is you've got now the two most powerful countries in Europe, um, Germany and Britain, 
France is no pooch, of course, but I think the two most powerful, meaningful nations in Europe would be uh, Europe, and I'm saying, let's say Russia, but, you know, uh, with Britain and Germany, are now run by women. And it'll be really interesting to see how though that that carries on. I think uh, uh, that's going to be a very interesting scenario. But uh, there's a lot of talk about this Article 50 that has to trigger the whole thing and how long is it going to be before. But who to believe that they would have had, while it was here, that they moved a prime minister out and moved a new prime minister in. I mean, that he was going to be, his idea was to wait around till October listeners. Of course, you know, people would know that, but he's gone. David, David Cameron, unfortunately, is gone. And the lady has now been elected. And, um, the other thing that someone mentioned, uh, just today, by the way, is that, uh, the lady that's elected here in England, she's a minister's daughter. And the, uh, Merkel's is a minister's daughter as well. Um, Lutheran church, I think, on Merkel's part. So, you've got, it's interesting that in these difficult times that is, a lot of it is centering, centering around religion, you've got two of the most powerful women in the world are both from, um, the um, Christian background. So if that's a, uh, not intentional, I'm sure, but that's just the way things work out. But it's an interesting observation from that uh, capacity. Very interesting, I think, in some ways. You mentioned before we went on air that brokerage houses in London are actually kind of acquiring or merging. Is that really a yep. big movement? Uh, merging, consolidating, very similar to what we've seen um, in um, in Canada, uh, particularly in, um, in in the more venture side, and the same here on the venture side. Um, and uh, I think it's a good thing as it is at the end of the day. I think a good thing in Vancouver too, that the ones that are left um, are stronger, um, arguably more organized than, than past uh, people. So I think it's a good thing, but it's interesting. You've got a similar uh, scenario going on here as what we've experienced uh, and are experiencing in Canada. So it's a it's 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 an interesting evolution, if you will, and watching it happen is certainly um, interesting. It'll, and I, but I think it'll be stronger. I think things will work out for people to be even stronger, and I, I firmly believe that. Do do people have a time frame on when they think it'll be stronger, or are they just positive right now and don't feel there's any reason to panic? Oh. Um, I, the, the areas I'm in, uh, Jim, if I'm being completely honest with myself and, and the listeners and everything else, is I'm I'm more involved at the moment in that resource section, and that is so busy with one thing and another that they are busy and they don't have a lot of time to to think about the bigger, longer picture. I think if you if I have philosophical conversations with some people, they've got their own opinions, but the a lot of the people I'm actually doing, spending a lot of time with here, are in the business end, and their business at the moment is involved in resource, natural resources, and they are just so busy, they're not really thinking whether it's, you know, they're just happy that it's been five years, and now they, they're actually busy in, in the middle of the summer, uh, um, you know, and, and not, not, not on holiday. I mean, Wimmer, uh, Per Wimmer that we met with late this, this afternoon, he says normally he'd be in the south of France now. Um, but he said, I'm still here. I did a conference call at 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, 10 o'clock. He said, he said, I've been, I've never been busier. And he does things all over the world in different, different, uh, businesses. But so, no, I think that the people that would be thinking about whether this is good, bad, or indifferent in the longer run, they haven't got the time. They want the people, all the people I'm seeing are so busy just, you know, getting on with their day and, and finding themselves so busy, uh, Jim. Well, you know from your own personal experience, if you're very busy, it's good times. And really, why sit around and worry about the future if you're really busy? Well, now? you don't. Well, the day flies, and you don't get a chance to worry about the future. No, you're just uh, busy, and um, I'm glad that I'm busy. I'm uh, very busy um, with the company I'm involved with directly, um, and that's keeping me very busy. I am busy. Um, marketing and and advising uh, this client uh, that I came over here with, and um, it's a busy time, and and I'm enjoying it, and I, I'm glad that it's back because it was, you know, it was four years of not boredom's not the right idea, but it was four definitely four or five years of hardship, that's for sure. So no, I'm 
I'm one of the people that's liking it, and I hope it continues. And Jim, I've got to go here now, but I, I've uh, thank you for taking the time. And I know you've been trying for two, three days, but it, it just wouldn't have worked before because I just didn't feel up to it. And um, I, I, I'm glad that you're patient with me, and I look forward to speaking to you again when I get back to uh, Vancouver. And hopefully you get over that horrible cold. Oh, worst I've had in 10 years. Martin, okay, thank and, you. And goodbye to everybody, and I, I hope to be, um, I can report on a lot of things that are, I think, are going to be happening here uh, shortly, and I'll be able to talk more about them, hopefully in uh, more detail um, in, in the coming, uh, in about two weeks' time. Thanks a lot, Martin. Thank you so much, listeners. Thanks again, Jim, for your patience. My guest has been Martin Element, a Vancouver-based marketing and corporate advisor who focuses on sourcing and pursuing new business ventures and opportunities. He was speaking to us from London. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. You can forward questions for the show to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.